welcome, listener, to another edition of the Coco and Dolls Podcast. Real people doing real reviews. Uh, Coco, what are we uh, talking about this week? <laughs> I mean, I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dolls. Hey, what are we talking about? This is It's been a long time, so I'm a little rusty, so you'll have to forgive me, listener, <laughs> for my a little wacky intro. And we haven't been drinking today, which is stunning because there's nothing else to do today because it's gray and overcast and we're kind of stuck inside. And it's Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So today we're talking about the first episode of season two of Ted Lasso. What? We are so excited that it's back. Season one was fantastic. Season two just premiered Friday on Apple TV Plus. If you have Apple TV Plus, if not... You should get it because it's only $5 a month. For Ted Lasso, come on. For Ted Lasso, you can't beat that. So uh, just a quick overview. If you did not see season one of Ted Lasso, Jason Sudeikis plays Ted Lasso. He's an American college football coach. He gets hired by an English soccer team to coach their team. Uh, The owner is a woman named Rebecca. She has nefarious reasons for hiring Ted Lasso. She got the soccer team in a divorce from her husband who loves that team more than he loves anything else in life. And she basically wanted to drive it into the ground to hurt him. Mm -hmm. But Ted Lasso kind of wins everybody over. So at the end of season one, the team gets uh, relegated down to <laughs> not the Premier League. Uh, you know, they were in the Premier League. They didn't have a good enough record. They got relegated. Now they are not in the Premier League. Season two opens. They've had seven straight ties. Mm-hmm. So season two, he's still coaching the team. He's kind of won everybody over with his homespun wisdom. <laughs> uh, like I said, seven straight ties. Danny Rojas, uh Episode one kind of focuses on star Danny Rojas, who accidentally kills the (laughs) team mascot, uh, the Greyhound, with a penalty kick when the dog runs in front of the goal. Which, by the way, I don't think the Greyhound showed up in season one. Yeah, I don't remember the Greyhound in season one. It was kind of a random, it's like all of a sudden we got a mascot and all of a sudden it's dead. Yeah, I know that they were called the Greyhounds in season one, but I don't remember seeing a Greyhound mascot in season one. Anyways, so Danny Rojas is in a bad mental state Mm -hmm. after killing a dog. Mm -hmm. So the team hires a sports psychologist to come in. She talks to Danny as well as a few of the other players. Uh, In other news, Rebecca is now (laughs) seeing a man who is fine, but doesn't necessarily light her fire. They go on a double date with Keely and Roy Keeley is still working for the club. Roy has retired. He is now coaching his niece's under nine soccer team. He's had an offer from Sky Sports to be a pundit, which he really does not <laughs> under any circumstances want to take. To say the least. Which he expresses in a his very uniquely Roy way, including... In a swear jar, uh, yeah. horrific way. <laughs> Lots of F-bombs. He hasn't said the C word yet, though, which is pretty prevalent in the UK. But I guess they thought that might be a bridge too far for American audiences. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we've heard the C word yet. No. Uh, so yeah, it's just kind of getting into the swing of this season. Not a lot going on with Ted Lasso in this episode. Right. He was really kind of in the back seat. Um, he did seem to be a little bit jealous of the sports psychologist. I will say the sports psychologist was very no nonsense. She didn't want him calling her Doc. She preferred to be called doctor. Mm -hmm. She didn't wave at him. She was uncharmed by him. I felt like that is a more accurate depiction of how English people would actually (laughs) react to Ted Lasso instead of them all kind of being grudgingly charmed by him Mm -hmm. like they were in season one. But And you've spent some time there. Yeah. But, you know, that that was a while ago. So things might have changed. I don't Mm -hmm. know. Anyways, uh, do you have anything to add to the summary Adults. I feel like that was kind of an all over the place summary because it was kind of a little bit of an all over the place episode, not in a bad way, but just mm-hmm. there wasn't, you know, I mean, there were themes, but it was just kind of like a lot of different characters doing a lot of different things in this episode. It was the appetizer for the main meal of the season. The amuse-bouche. Amuse-bouche, exactly. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, and also this is the first time we've talked about Ted Lasso, so we should right. probably give some background in terms of how we came upon 
Ted Lasso. So one day... I don't... Does anybody care how we came upon yes, Ted Lasso? Yes. So we need to have some background. So what happened was I was bored one night and I started watching Ted Lasso in bed and you were doing something else. And then... I was probably sleeping. No, I, I was in bed and oh, okay. you were doing something else. I don't, I don't know. know. And so it was like one of those things where, oh yeah, I heard a lot about this series and maybe I'll try watching it. And I couldn't get enough of it. The first season is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Coco said, hey, maybe we should watch this. And I said, I'll watch it again with you. So that speaks to the quality of the first season when we have so many options in this streaming uh, horrific kind of <laughs> world that we're in. We have a lot of streaming services. We have, And we a lot, have a lot of things to watch. And there are a lot of things on our watch lists. And I was like, yeah, I'll watch that again. So, And they're only like 30 minutes long, roughly. Yeah. Really episode, good episodes. The episode today was 40-ish minutes long. Yeah. And I but... think they're going to be in that neighborhood for season two by the sounds of it. But um, they're very easily uh, bingeable and... Very yokely. The guy is very relatable. He goes over there and you think, well, an American in London, this has been done. Uh, you know, the fish out of water story. But it's actually done in a very charming way, in a very sort of heart stringy kind of way without being sappy. Um, and the reason Ted's over there in the first place is because he's going through a divorce and, you know, his, his now ex-wife was like, I need some space. So he did that and went overseas. And so as a result of, the, of that backstory... The first season was kind of more uh, establishing the characters. It was more about who are these people and how they're going to get around and how they're going to get along. And uh, we had the uh, we had Jamie Tart, who's not in the he's not on the team anymore. Who is a fantastic, you know, really <laughs> cocky young player who was upsetting the the apple cart a lot on the team. And then we had. Roy Kent, uh, as mentioned by Coco, the veteran guy who was on the end, other end of the scale and he was on his way out and he's still in this. Um, so that dynamic was really interesting. We don't really have that dynamic in the, in the second season right now. And the first episode, I got to say, was a little disappointing because it wasn't nearly as funny as the rest of the episodes in the first season. Wow. The first season, the pace was really good. There was a laugh almost every minute. It was very witty. It was very insiderly. So you had to know, you had to have a good sense of culture, not just English culture. I mean, just in general, like the Spice Girls references and stuff like that <laughs> that they were making. They were all really funny. Um I didn't see as many of those. I didn't hear as many of those in this go around. And the characters didn't have the, there wasn't the the friction in in this episode that there were in the in the first uh, episodes of the first season. So, for example, the new owner, her and Ted Lasso in the first season, she was, you know, she just brought him to essentially make a fool out of him and submarine the team undermine the team and that has sort of been resolved and so now we have to have new friction we have to have new conflict in this second season and we don't quite have it i think we have it with the the therapist and ted lasso so obviously it looks like ted lasso because he's this amateur psychologist for everybody on the team now they got a pro and he's like i'm being usurped and my <laughs> role i can see this storyline developing right now is the is the shrink going to be there the whole season, though? I haven't read if she's going to... I think she's going to be there for most of it, yeah, okay. from what I read. That's kind of like the, the conflict now. So, I, I mean, every good story comes out of some sort of conflict. And now that the season one conflicts have largely been resolved, we have to introduce something new. Um, but it's, the characters are still so lovable, and the dialogue is still pretty good. Again, it's, I didn't think it was as, as good as the first season, but this is just one episode, so we'll see how it goes. Right. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. I mean... It's the first episode of the second season. Season one was really self-contained. You know, as a storyline, it was them trying not to be relegated mm -hmm. and stay, you know, in the, you know, in the big division. And then they couldn't avoid that at the very end. So now we have to rebuild. So I feel like season one was its own storyline. And now we have to establish the storylines for season two because there's not that continuation you know it's yeah. not like okay we we managed to stay in the premier league all right you know mm -hmm. now it's just gonna be more like oh this week we're playing man city next week we're playing sheffield wednesday you know um i did like that we saw i am not a soccer fan actually but i did like that we saw a little bit more soccer that was one of my criticisms of season one mm -hmm. was that we we did see soccer in season one, but we didn't see Ted trying to learn soccer right. and how to coach soccer. Right, right. And I understand that when you're 
a fish out of water in that kind of situation, okay, yeah, you're going to crowdsource like, hey, guys, what were the trick plays that you ran on your Mm -hmm. old teams that we could maybe do? But the poutine play was my favorite, by the way. (laughs) Exactly. It was a mysterious poutine or something like that. But there was no shot of him staying up until four in the morning reading, you know, soccer for dummies or whatever. So that was one of my criticisms of season one. So I feel like hopefully we can see more of that in season two, like him dedicating himself to, okay, I really, I owe it to these guys to be the best I can. And part of that is learning the sport that I don't know anything about, Mm -hmm. even though football and football share a name, that's the end of it, you know? (laughs) So, so I, uh, I enjoyed that there was like some, some scenes of soccer and practice and stuff. I didn't mind that in first, in the first season, I didn't mind the lack of soccer action. I like the best parts of that first season to me were the interactions with the players yeah. and like in practice or training as they call it. Those situations are really funny because they seem really authentic and legitimate to me. That, that having been around uh, lots of sports teams in my in my day, um, you can see that the there's that back and forth between uh, athletes and they, they're all high achieving athletes and they're all very competitive and all that sort of stuff. So they're always giving each other crap in the, in the locker room, that kind of thing. And that's the, that's the sort of stuff that I really like the, the action on the pitch is not uh, the game stuff is not really as essential because it's so hard to do it authentically. Yeah. And I don't need, if it's a 30 minute episode, I don't need 25 minutes of right. soccer. I'm just like, you right. know, he's coaching a soccer team. Like, yeah, you know, and we don't see any of that. Yeah, totally. We don't mm-hmm. see any X's and O's really. Right. Like it's, He's a fish out of water, like professionally and culturally, but we're really kind of only focusing on one instead of both. Yeah, and you know, yeah. and maybe we'll get more into that yeah. in, in season two. Uh, I hope so. I, I don't want it to get too detailed, but yeah, the no. guy's got to learn the sport. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and there's sort of this assumption that he has, and I don't think we really saw that. To your point, Coco. So yeah, yeah. I, maybe we'll see a little bit of that in season two. Other thoughts on uh, the first episode of season two. <laughs> So I did like the new uh, Dutch player, Jan. Yes. He was really funny. I hope we see more of him. Who was super frank about his, <laughs> yeah. his perspective. Yeah, he said of Donnie Roja, uh, Danny Rojas, we're watching the end of someone's career or something to that effect. <laughs> like it was it was really funny. Well, and then but... he said something else in one of the scenes and, and they said, don't worry, he's not being rude. He's just being Dutch. Yeah. And then everybody was like, oh, yeah, okay, we get it. <laughs> and that's another thing I really love about this show that you wouldn't really get in another sport is that the international mix, mm-hmm. like there's a, there's a Canadian player and there's a French player and there's a lot of British players and now there's a Dutch player and there's an African player and there's all these great uh, cultures coming together. Uh, there's a great uh, Canadian soccer series called 21 Thunder and it's really good. It's a little bit more serious than this, but it's the same idea. It's a, it's a team, it's a young team coming together and they've got to compete and they've got all this stuff going on and it's very similar in that uh, you've got the guys giving each other crap in, in the locker room, in the dressing room and then they go out after and they hang out and they do stuff together and that kind of stuff is really, especially somebody who, for myself, I played hockey when I was a kid, and you sort of really, that's a fun thing to be part of a team and have all these guys that, you know, you have people from different walks of life, but the the sport unites you. And I think that that's one of the things that I really like about this is authentic. It feels genuine. Some of the players I've read up, some of the actors have actually been players in the past, oh. not you know, to that level, uh-huh. but like Danny Rojas played and then he had a knee injury and then he, uh-huh. he ended up deciding he was going to be the actor who plays Danny yeah. Rojas, mm-hmm. Rojas. I mean, um, and then he decided, well, maybe I'll just act. And then he turned out to be, he's one of the, 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 the <laughs> shining lights of this series. Like every time he comes out, it's like Danny Rojas and he's yeah. saying his name all the time and football is life. And, F- football is life. And he's just so ever effervescent that you just can't help but <laughs> right, uh, totally. cheer for the guy. So, uh, there's a lot of great characters in this, and and I hope it continues. I hope, I hope the first one. I'm a little bit disappointed, but maybe it's because I had such high hopes for season two. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I, uh, it is only going to be a three season series, so I think we pretty much have season one is they get relegated. Season two is they try to work their way back up into you know playing with the big boys, and then season three. We win, right. we win the FA Cup. So I think right. I think we kind of have like our three season storyline mapped out. But I I enjoyed it. I thought I thought it was funny. I thought it was. I liked the storylines. I hope. I'm really really angry that linear TV seems to be coming back. Yes. And Apple TV Plus is only releasing one episode a week of this. I wish they would have just dumped it all yeah. on one day and 
so we could have binged it because that's legit all I would have been doing this weekend. Because when we watched season one, I think we powered through it in like three days. Yeah. And that's the way I watched it the first time around too. It was like I watched it, I think, three nights in a row and mm-hmm. just blasted right through it. Because it's that kind of season or that kind of series really where you feel like you've got to, it's like, oh yeah, I can do another one of those. It's only 30 minutes. And then <laughs> next thing you know, it's four hours later and you've done right. nothing but sit on the couch. <laughs> right, totally. But it was, we should mention that it's ha- it has a whole whack of Emmy uh, nominations too. Yes, so, 20 Emmy nominations. Which is a record and uh, well-deserved, you know, like the guy who plays Roy Kent, who's Brett Goldstein, he got nominated, you know, so the, everybody, every level uh, of participation pretty got pretty much got recognized in Ted Lasso. Yeah, Jason Sudeikis got nominated for Best Actor and then I think four of the supporting actors got nominated yeah which is crazy (laughs) crazy unprecedented and well deserved i think too but i I remember saying that to you coco after i watched it's like that's one of the better things i've seen on tv in a long long time yeah it was and not just because it's a light fluffy comedy it's actually got some depth to it so Mm -hmm. uh definitely worth watch worthwhile and worth binging for sure got anything else dad so what's your letter grade for this one coco oh okay yeah i'd say like a to A minus. Oh. I enjoyed it. That's a, high for yeah, you, isn't it? A minus, yeah. Wow. I'd give it probably an uh, 8 out of 10. That is the highest you've ever done as yeah, well. Wow. It's, it's the best. I have to follow up my grade with uh, actual, uh, you know, backing it up. But um, <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, 8 out of 10. And that's for the entire... Uh, we're, I guess we should rate this episode, too. Because oh, we're going to yeah, be I rating would, the episodes. Yeah. I Season one, I'd give an A mm-hmm. overall. Yeah, episode one of season two. Yeah, A minus. A minus for the same. Yeah, I'd, I'd give it probably a seven. I'd give the season, last season, uh, an eight. But this uh, this particular episode is a seven. It's still really good. I mean, it's still going to make you laugh. And you're still going to get choked up in spots. And it's got this variety of emotions. <laughs> this roller coaster of emotions. Or whatever they call What do they call roller coasters in... Uh, the UK? I have no idea. They probably don't have roller coasters in the UK. They're probably like very civil over there. I never went to an amusement park in the UK. Are, can you imagine what a UK amusement park would look like? What would they serve there? I went to uh, Brighton Brighton Pier. like. <laughs> but that's like just a pier where you go and look at nature, right? No, there's like a... The Ferris wheel? Or? <laughs> there's like... Well, there's the big Ferris wheel in London. There's well, the, the eye. The eye, that's yeah, right. But so. it's massive. It's more like a condo on yeah, wheels, it's, isn't it's, it? It's huge. Yeah. So, all right. We're getting off track. <laughs> So anything else to offer on Ted Lasso, episode one, season two? I got nothing. So thanks for joining us, listener. We appreciate it. And tune in for next episode uh, review that we do on Ted Lasso for another week. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dolph.